Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you about why you should use File System or FS, the built-in Node.js module, to manage all of your files and folders instead of something like CS Interface or JSX. Now I have made a tutorial before on the more specifics of using FS, such as if you want to read uh, directories, make directories, aka folders, or if you want to read and write files. This is super useful and make sure you check that out if you haven't already. But today's gonna be more about the why and why you should use this, I guess it's built in, but sometimes external library to manage all your files and stuff rather than just using the, in my case, comfortable JSX. In my tutorials, I am mostly guilty of only teaching the things that I'm comfortable with. But as soon as over the past few months, which is why there's been a slight hiatus in videos because I've been in the learning process, but aside from that, uh, I've been learning it over the past few months and really getting to understand why you should use it as well and really making sure you progress into your uncomfortable or things you don't want to learn spaces in programming. And that will always lead to not only new opportunities, but just more expansion of your programming knowledge. And since I've learned FS, I see all these different advantages to it, as well as future opportunities that it brings. You might be thinking to yourself, why should I upgrade to Node.js file management rather than something that I've already programmed because then you have to port all of your code, any custom functions and sortings and that kind of thing you've done. Um, well, there are a lot of things out there like ChatGPT, which can really help, um, as you can guess, convert it directly from uh, JS to uh, this other language. It is, of course, the same language, but it's got a different syntax and that kind of thing. So I can literally say, please convert this code to node.js and just like that it's going to literally give you a one-to-one -one conversion um, there will be cases where if you have custom sort of functions like I mentioned or other custom JSX things if you don't specify those uh, directly to ChatGPT then you probably will have to go back in and learn a little bit more just to tweak it and get it working the way you want but in general, I would say ChatGPT is a great way to uh, take that step if you're really uncomfortable having to learn something completely new and just kind of either have it do it for you or to just get more familiar reading the syntax and then taking your steps into programming it without you needing it. But of course, you can just use it if you want to as well. And this does spit out something that's going to do the exact same thing as uh, this JSX function would do. But now we can keep it one within our actual JS file, have, not have to deal with uh, asynchronicity and that kind of thing. And two, uh, it's just going to be a lot easier to use this in other projects as well. And that's kind of the main thing that I've been learning about the advantages of using this instead of uh, the previous CS interface going into JSX and managing files in there. There's a couple of really important things in terms of features that I really like and again, future opportunities. So the features that I think are better in uh, FS include things like file organization and ordering. There are times when you read files in a JSX file on Mac and Windows and the order of all the files you get back may be different. Um, I've had this issue before, which leads to having to create custom sort functions, which leads to other problems. And it's just easier to use Node.js because the way it organizes and filters things is going to be the exact same on Mac and Windows. And then manipulating those later on is also going to be easy using just JS instead of having to deal with, say, ECMAScript 3, which gives us a lot more limitations for file matching if you really need to get into like custom sorting and that sort of thing. So when working on other projects that I actually use Node.js instead, that was the first thing I noticed is that the ordering and sort of way it reads in and filters everything is consistent across OSs. It's consistent across the board, across different programs and things like that. And it's not a huge feature, but you can see the filter function it created for me is a lot nicer, I'd say, than having to do it in JSX. The next advantage to using Node.js is that uh, you can actually use other built-in modules like OS and path, not just FS, to then manipulate the strings or paths you get back from uh, searching through your files. If you want to get, say, the base name, you can use path.baseName, and this can give you the opportunity to easily parse out the actual file name of an entire string, 
or you can parse out like the last parent folder, depending on the way you format things. And that's built in, you can easily include that. Um, and then easily, instead of having to do like slices and substrings and JSX, you can just use these built in functions to get things done. So OS and path are both super useful for dealing with uh, cross platform uh, compatibility, as well as extracting out certain parts of file names that are very common among people who use them. And then there's the sort of future opportunities that learning something like this can give you. Now, I, I've used FS a few times. Obviously, I made a tutorial a while ago about it. So I had to at some point touch it and use it and get my feet a little bit wet in the process. Why this is advantageous to your future as a programmer or freelance or whatever is this can be applied to other uh, types of extensions and add-ons. Not only can we use this in Adobe, we can use it in other types of things that support these kind of visual add-ons like Resolve. You have workflow integrations, which is also like a CEP panel. And that requires obviously you to not use CS interface. So porting a project to something else like a DaVinci Resolve extension or any kind of other extension that uses something like uh, uh, Node.js libraries. Um, in this case, I believe it uses Atom. And that makes you use Node.js and port everything over. And that gives you an opportunity to make a, basically a port of your product for a different application. It also allows you to make future applications if you've never made one for this type of program. In my case, I ported a existing CEP from an After Effects extension to a DaVinci Resolve workflow integration. That was the easiest way for me to use my existing experience and code base to learn it and open up opportunity to say, hey, I see you have users commenting on your videos saying you want they want this extension to also work for Resolve. There's also other things like Final Cut Pro, which use a different process entirely, which I may get into in the future, but there are other programs like Resolve, and I'm sure there's others that use Atom and uh, basically the same kind of way CEP works, where you can then use your newly applied skills and get new jobs, make new ports of products, and present them to people as you wish. So the moral of the story, if it hasn't been clear already, is to basically pursue the things that make you uncomfortable. Um, if it's something you don't want to learn because you think it's too hard, then you should probably do it. And that will lead you into a whole slew of other possible paths you can take, different opportunities, and of course, different functional workflow operations and simplicity uh, in this case. But thank you for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below, subscribe. And of course, uh, be sure to check out all the links in the description for code, uh, social media, and all that stuff. And as I briefly mentioned, I was on a bit of a break, really just learning and thinking about the channel overall. And I've kind of decided if it's a video I have to rush, a video I don't want to make, or a video that I think isn't really that valuable or something new to the community, I don't want to make it and I don't want to release it. I want to spend time on the videos and really focus on something that I've learned and share that knowledge with everybody and make sure the quality is good, as you can see by the increasing camera quality and all those sorts of things. Um, and I really just, even if it means releasing only a few times a month, I want to make sure that everything is really good quality and leaves me feeling satisfied. Um, as for quite a while now, the videos haven't necessarily left me with the best Feeling. But as of recent, really focusing on things that I, I appreciate and learn and forcing myself to learn, uh, I get a lot more out of that. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.